Well, we're another year older, and another fantasy football season has come and gone. And guess who won again this year? Yeah, that's my team name right there. Don't need no stinking Rodgers. After Aaron Rodgers went down, after I picked him in the third round, first quarterback off the board. That's my column right there. And that's how I drafted this year. Well, let's look back and take a look at this season and see if there are any lessons that y'all can learn from me. Um, not bragging or anything, but I do win this uh, league fairly often. That may say more about the participants in my league than it says about me. But there is a pattern developing here, so uh, I just wanted to show you what happened. So here's the brackets for the playoffs. I came in uh, seven and what was it? Seven and six. Not too good. So I was ranked uh, fourth seed, advanced against the number one seed, crushed him, and then won the championship. Now championships and brackets, week to week matchups, as I'll show you during the regular season matchups. There's not much you can do about your matchup, really. You really need to have a good draft. What you need to do is you need to focus on getting the most points in the league, which I did again this year, almost by 100, 90-some uh, points it looks like I, I had that. And that's with two players that didn't even play because they were last-minute scratches for uh, two different reasons. Uh, Gronk won uh, Thursday night game, and I did not check. I have to admit, I was away from my phone and unable to do that. And one Sunday morning, uh, I picked up uh, that sharp guy from uh, uh, the Giants. Uh, he had like two good weeks in a row, picked him up, and then he got a migraine and didn't play. Uh, thank you very much. Dropped him like a hot rock. I cannot have players like that. So let's take a look at uh, what I did this year and how that affected the outcome of this great season in which I won the maximum number of dollars that I could win in my league by getting the most points, which pays all of the trades and uh, the uh, bracket. So, well, let's take a look here. This was the draft. I was drafting second, so uh, thank goodness I did not have to choose between Bell and Johnson, even though I would have taken Bell probably because I live in Pittsburgh and that would have made it more interesting for me to watch this season. But Johnson was a big favorite, and he obviously went down right away. Brown was a pretty good uh, choice, too. I might have taken Brown. But I really wanted to go uh, running back heavy, and I wanted running backs that caught the ball out of the backfield. And you can see that's exactly what I did. I, I know that Gurley ended up being the best running back of the year, but um, Bell was very close second, and Bell caught 85 balls out of the backfield. Uh, McCaffrey, they used him exactly the way that we thought they were going to use that rookie down in uh, Carolina. And they used him as a receiver out of the backfield, basically. And I picked up Coleman for the same reason because Coleman has uh, been in the past used by Atlanta as a third down back. Although, as you'll see, I dropped Coleman for a better choice later. And uh, that choice is not on this board at all. Rodgers went down and my starting quarterback was not on this board at all. Not even drafted. So that's interesting. So that's something to, uh, to consider is that... While you don't want to screw up your draft, um, you definitely can improve your team as the year goes on. If you're in a league like mine where there are 10 players or 12 players even, there's always going to be a rookie on the bench that changes the game. Uh, that's exactly what happened for me. So let's, let's go through it and uh, show you what's going on here. So if we go to Game Center... Um, we can start with uh, week. This is the championship game, which I won. Didn't even get 100 points, which I was a little disappointed. But let's start with week one. Week one, I set my lineup with Aaron Rodgers, 
who actually did okay, better than Breeze. Le'Veon Bell got off to a slow start because he was holed out in camp. McCaffrey did okay. Golden Tate turned into be a pleasant surprise. Crowder ended up being nothing, and I ended up dropping him, and Gronk had a bad week. Coleman did okay, and I could not pick a kicker to save my life. I just cannot do that, but I will show you how unimportant kickers are uh, in a little bit. Remind me to do that at the end of the video. Uh, I, I took the Vikings, uh, even though I had Seattle's defense, because I'm pretty sure Seattle was playing, yes, Seattle was playing against my quarterback, and I did not want to have to root against my quarterback, even though Seattle did much, much better. But not enough that it would have made a difference in this matchup. Um, week two, I lost as well. But by now, I had decided that uh, I was going to start Randall, I was going to start Keenan Allen, put Golden Tate in my um, flex. And uh, <clears throat> the Seahawks were pretty much going to be a lock, except for one more matchup. And uh, I had Cobb at the beginning, and that was great when Rodgers was playing. That was good. And, of course, Keenan Allen was going to be a monster this year. And he sure did turn out to be a monster. So that was great. But even though I scored 100 points, I lost this game as well. And this is the person I played, actually, in the finals. And he crushed me. So I'm glad that um, I improved my team between Week 2 and Week 16. Third week, I'm scoring even better, but I'm up against the buzzsaw in Gurley, uh, Winston, uh, Gurley, Freeman, uh, Stefan Diggs had an amazingly uncharacteristic week. This Tyreek Hill ended up being pretty good, and I let him go. I should have drafted him, uh, but I had no idea that uh, that the um, uh, Chiefs were going to be as good as they were. They did win against uh, in the opener against uh, the Patriots, uh, but I should have uh, seen that coming. And, and as a matter of fact, I did see that coming because what happened was I dropped my backup quarterback and picked up Alex Smith. And that ended up saving my season as well uh, because Rodgers goes down uh, – Two weeks from now. So Rogers Bell, the next week, actually get a win. Rogers Bell, uh, Allen, uh, Gronk, everybody was a monster in this week. Actually uh, played Landry instead of Tate this week. I'm not sure if Tate was on a bye or not. Uh, let's see. Following week was a uh, pretty close, uh, but not too bad. Oh, at this point, I was calling my team the Ice Dragon because I had just seen Game of Thrones and I saw that great scene where the dragon was using ice fire to, uh, uh, spoiler alert, um, to make a hole in the wall by the sea. Anyway, Rogers still in. Great. Bell, great. Caffrey, great. Tate, okay. Allen, okay. Gronk was a scratch, last minute scratch. Um, not that my backup, Ebron, who had one point this week, would have been any better, but kind of annoying for the because I, I was really going for the overall most points in the league so not knowing that uh, Gronk wasn't going to play was a big deal for me I was a little upset about that all right so here's when I changed my team name to don't know, need no stinking Rogers because I scored 131 points even though Rogers went out early in this game uh, Bell was a monster Caffrey's a monster Tate was a monster Allen did okay Gronk was a monster. Landry was a monster. Landry ended up being one of those guys who was going to get me 12 to 14 points every week. And uh, he's on a terrible team. And I hate players that are on terrible teams. But Landry turned out to be a real steady uh, guy for me. So now you can see I'm on 2 and 5 going into uh, week 7 or after week 7. But I did put Alex Smith in and he was great. Um so he ended up being like my go-to quarterback. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, McCaffrey was okay. Landry was a monster again. So, um, but my kicker, gosh, I couldn't get, argh. I don't think I got more than double digits, more than two weeks out of my kicker. Okay, win the following week with um, my guy Smith. All these guys are just scoring like steady points. Not a big deal. 
Um, but anyway, okay, so we're going through this week by week, and I'm sure you guys are getting bored by now, but you can see what's going on here. Um, by this time, I picked up Alvin Kamara and dropped Te uh, Tevon Coleman. And what a pick that ended up being. Kamara ended up being a superstar, um, almost rivaling Bell in certain weeks. This was obviously a week when Bell was off. Uh, McCaffrey's catching balls. I mean, I just, this is tearing it up. Two points out of a kicker, still getting 132 points uh, total. Just a monster. Let's look at Camara or Kamara again. Here I'm kicking it with uh, 143 points. This time I put Jared Goff in. Uh, must have had uh, Alex Smith on a bye or just thought, you know, I started to see what Goff was capable of. Here's Le'Veon, here's Kamar, there's Tate, there's Landry, uh, McCaffrey in the slot, or in the uh, slot, in the flex. Just great. And for finally once, my kicker gets 10 points. Uh, just unstoppable. Now I'm up to, I'm down to like five and six. I was five and five. Uh, Smith didn't do that great this week. Kamara was a monster again. Tate kind of let me down. This is when Sterling Shepard was a no-show last-minute scratch. Keenan Allen started to have those weeks where he was scoring 30, 28, 33 points. Uh, you know, he just turned into something special. All right, and this was like the ultimate week when everything just was firing on all cylinders. Smith was doing, he actually did okay. Uh, Bell, Kamara. Tate didn't even do that good. Landry, Gronk, Keenan Allen, just, just crushing it. Just crushing it. So, final week of the regular season. Get to 7-6. and six. Uh, Kamara again. Bell's a lock. Uh, Allen's a lock. What was I thinking with Ginn? I have no idea. Uh, Gronk was good. Landry was good. So here we are set up for the playoffs. So anyway, I won't take you through the playoffs. I won my matchups. Not a big deal. But what I do want to show you is um, the players, how my players ended up ranking. Okay. So here's quarterbacks. I drafted who I thought was the best quarterback you know, that was Rodgers. And that remained to be seen. We don't know what kind of season he would have had. But who I ended up with was Alex Smith, who has ended up being the second best scoring quarterback in the league this year, only behind Russell Wilson and edging out the amazing Tom Brady. Now, if Carson Wentz hadn't gone out, Carson Wentz would have probably easily been the best quarterback scoring wise. But like, look at this. You know, I got Jared Goff as my backup, better than Phil Rivers, better than Drew Brees. I mean, Brees was throwing these short passes all season long. I think Brees' reign of terror may be over, but you can see both of my quarterbacks ended up being better than Brees. Let's look at running backs. Now, Gurley edged out Bell in points, just barely. But I got to tell you, I knew Le'Veon Bell was going to catch a ton of balls. And 85 receive receipts, re, um, receptions are is amazing. Uh, this Kareem Hunt, I should have drafted. But I ended up with Camera. He ended up with 75 balls caught out of the backfield. backfield. And so did Christian McCaffrey. In a point, when I'm getting a full point per catch, that is amazing. I am turning my running backs into wide receivers. And that is something that you can do in your point per reception league as well. Who would have thought that Kamara and Ingram would have been side by side in points at the end? So just always look out for that rookie, you know, play that waiver wire. Make sure that you're willing to like take a chance. Um, wide receivers, Keenan Allen is third behind Antonio Brown and DeAndre Hopkins. Unbelievable. And Fitzgerald's still up there. Man, I wanted Fitzgerald. Um, I couldn't get Fitzgerald, so I ended up taking um, Landry. But look where Landry ends up. Jarvis Landry 
ends up one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh overall by the end of the year. And Golden Tate's in the top, what is that, 10, 11, uh, right behind those guys. So I ended up drafting three really good receivers. Tight end, of course, I took Gronkowski, who was just behind Travis Kelsey. Um, but, you know, Gronk's money, except for those few games a year that he's not going to play. And it happens. It happens every year. And that's why I was in desperate search of good backup. I ended up with Vernon Davis. I didn't have to use him. I, I picked Davis for a couple reasons. Uh, it took him later in the season because he was playing on the West Coast and he was behind Gronk. So if Gronk was going to be a scratch, at least I was going to have somebody playing in that position. So that was amazing. My defense started out amazing. The, the Seattle Seahawks, um, if we pull up their stats, these guys were, you know, doing okay. Double digits in a couple uh, games. They did have that uh, zero against Tennessee. But as soon as it was right around here where um, Sherman got hurt, and then shortly thereafter Chancellor got hurt, when you don't have leaders like that playing defense, it was hard. And... So I ended up picking defenses based on matchups after that. And you can get by on that. Um, I didn't expect to have to do that, but that's what ended up happen happening. Now here is once and for all, just showing you guys how kickers do not matter. Okay? They just do not matter. I ended up with Kai Forbath and a bunch of other kickers that I just, you know, could not... Um, I just couldn't make it work with the kickers. Now, check out Zauerlein, okay? He was playing for the scoringest team in the NFL, which was the Rams. So, of course, he has a ton of points. If you throw him his, his anomalous score out, because he's got 20 more points than the nearest kicker, the next nearest kicker is Robbie Gould, who ended up on one of the, who's on one of the worst teams in the NFL. Who could have picked that? And next is, Gron is Goskowski, who's on one of the best teams in the NFL. And then Boswell is on one of the best teams in the NFL, except he's always kicking it at a place where it's really hard to kick. Tucker's no surprise. Butker ends up, you know, being okay because he's on a scoring team. Lutz is on a scoring team. What I'm saying here is the kicker that I ended up with that I was so mad at is, is only 15 points off the guy who was in second place, Robbie Gould. Um, so... It's really a crapshoot trying to pick a kicker. That's why they go in the last round because there's just no point wasting a, ki a pick on a kicker. Let's, let's look at where Alex Smith ended up, okay? Unbelievable. Second, only the Russell Wilson this year. Who would have thought? That, and he wasn't even drafted in my league. You can see, not even drafted. Nowhere on this board. Carson Wentz was drafted in the 12th round. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So there are there are picks out there. But you can see, I picked Bell. I picked Gronk. These are two guys that are at the top of their league, top of their class. This guy was going to be at the top of the class. Took a shot here. Allen ended up being third. I would have never guessed that. Tate ended up being in the top 11, 12. Uh, Landry ended up being seventh. That's amazing to pick the number seven receiver in the seventh round. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He should have gone by all rights early in the second round. And I ended up picking him in the seventh round. Is that genius? A little bit. But it's a lot, it's a little bit of luck too. So all I'm saying is this was a great year for me. I won the championship. I had the most points. This is not an anomalous thing. This happens in this league for me a lot. Um, I just have to say, I don't know. If there anything anything in this video was helpful to you, I hope it was. And I hope you like this video. If you do find anything at all helpful for you for next year, I, I wish you the best in your league. I really do. If you have any questions about what my strategy was, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you want to share this with a friend, go ahead. 
Hopefully it's not a friend that's in your league because you want to keep all of those secrets to yourself. And if you want to see any more videos on fantasy football, subscribe and leave a comment so that I know that you're subscribing because you want to see more fantasy football and not the many other things that I do. Although I hope that you find some of those interesting as well, such as battlefields, uh, uh, explaining ancient battles, um, different uh, games, casual games that I play, and uh, some comments on Dungeons and Dragons. So with that, I leave you, and uh, Happy New Year. I hope that next year's fantasy football is successful. I hope that this year's was successful for you as well. Take care of yourselves out there.